Good afternoon, everybody. Obviously, the day we talk a little bit about the budget, if you don't mind. Exactly. I think the day is the day where we must turn the page on a month of uh, or several months of failed negotiations and move forward with a balanced budget that my administration proposed on December 31st. Over the past few weeks, I worked with Democrats and negotiated simply because the Republicans have left the table. In the end, we did not reach a deal because Democrats could not stand up to the special interests to make the long-term spending reductions and to create jobs and to stimulate the economy and to make state government more efficient. That is why I vetoed the bills that they sent me yesterday. Now it's time for all of the legislators to come to the table, Democrats and Republicans, to take up the budget that I laid out last week. As I've said before, that the best way to solve our problems is with a balanced approach that is designed like a four-legged stool. And with the financial crisis, as serious as it is right now in our state, we need all four legs to be strong in order to hold up that stool. The first leg is to reduce spending by $17.4 billion. And as you know, this comes from three main categories of areas, which is uh, education, health and human services, and prisons. The second leg of this tool is to increase revenues by $14.3 billion, coming mainly from a temporary one and a half cent increase in state sales tax and use tax. And the next leg of that tool is economic stimulus. Our unemployment rate, as you all know, is 8.4%. It was in November. We expect it to go up to 9%. So I think that creating jobs is one of the most important things. It's about jobs, jobs, jobs. That's why I've been adamant about easing environmental regulations and other red tapes in order to get the infrastructure going, to get infrastructure projects moving as quickly as possible. For every billion dollars that we spend on infrastructure, we create 18 to 20,000 new jobs. Federal government estimates actually 40,000 new jobs, but we try to be conservative about those numbers. Those are jobs that the people in California need right now. The last leg of the stool is to make government more efficient. Soon after I took office, I proposed many times to make government more efficient. I talked about blowing up the boxes, to consolidate at various different departments and get rid of some of the boards and, and so on. But at that time, in 2004, the economy was going up and revenues were going up, so there was not a good time to talk about making cuts and also to streamline government. But I think it's always a good time, and it's smart uh, for government to be more efficient, especially now in this crisis. It makes even more sense right now. By taking steps like streamlining our energy functions and consolidating information technology under the state's new chief information office at Jared Akai, uh, we can save billions of dollars. Now, the four-legged approach will balance our budget, make government more efficient, help stimulate the economy and create the jobs. Our crisis gets worse every day if we don't go and solve this problem. In a matter of weeks, California, which is the eighth largest economy in the world, will run out of cash and start issuing IOUs to the people that it does business with. It also would delay uh, refunds to our hard-working taxpayers. These are taxpayers that are working hard, that live by the rule, and raise their families. I think that they deserve better than that. Now, it is time for Republicans and for Democrats to put politics once and for all aside and to make the tough choices needed to keep our state from financial disaster that would take years to recover from. It's not enough for Republicans just to say that we want to see first the cuts before we even talk about revenues. And it's not enough for Democrats to say we want to see first the extra revenues before we talk about cuts. That's not good enough. Our state needs both in order to weather this crisis. As a matter of fact, we need that four-legged stool that I've been talking about. I know how difficult it is for my Republican colleagues to even talk about taxes. Let me tell you something. That is hard for me, too. Very difficult to even think about new taxes. And I know it is very difficult for Democrats to talk about the cuts, the economic stimulus package, and also to make, uh, to make government more efficient. I gave them a roadmap for that compromise in my budget that we laid out just last week. So to protect California, I think in the end, uh, you know, they will come to an agreement. 
I have faith in them that they will come to an agreement. I just hope that we can turn it around. Because right now, up until now, they've spent all their energy on not negotiating. And what I want to do is turn that energy around and make them spend all of that energy on negotiating and getting together and having that will to, to, to succeed. So with that, I want to open it up uh, for questions. Here in the building, that obviously has been fractured badly. You have not had historically a good alliance with Republicans, so it seems to me you find yourself isolated politically here. I feel that I have a good relationship uh, with Democrats and with Republicans. Uh, that does not mean we agree on everything, it doesn't mean we have our ups and downs. Yes, we will, but I think by me being in the center, I have created good relationships with both sides, and there are also the moments sometimes when both of them come in and disagree with you. But, uh, you know, I have had wonderful negotiations with uh, Senator Steinberg and also with uh, Speaker Bass. Uh, we have worked very hard throughout Christmas and New Year, even on New Year's Eve, and we were making endless amount of phone calls and uh, uh, a video conference, and, uh, you know, uh, we did everything that we can. It just, you know, for the, the time ran out, and uh, we fell short. But Governor, no, Governor no, when you say... Republicans didn't want to dance with you before. What is it in your budget now that you're looking at, your proposal now, that's going to bring more Republicans to your side and say, okay, yeah, we're going to move with him in this direction? The Democrats have never put up any of the proposals that will get any votes by the Republicans, including myself. Everything that we have seen so far and the budget proposals or the, the bills that they have sent me yesterday wouldn't get any Republican votes, not even my own. So therefore, as I have explained to, to Senator Steinberg and to Speaker Bass, I cannot go out and get Republican votes when I wouldn't vote for it. I would never do that. So up until now, they've never agreed to the kind of economic stimulus package that we need, to the kind of job creation that we need, to the kind of legislation that will keep people longer in their homes if there's foreclosure, which we need, all of the things to make the necessary and really serious cuts and to make government run more efficiently. All of those things they have fallen short on. Governor, are you, are you ruling out a majority vote Democrat-only plan at this point? Well, at this point now, we have Democrats and Republicans in the building. I am encouraging them and have encouraged them yesterday already that they should get together and should start negotiating. I'm going to ask them for a Big Five meeting tomorrow to bring them together and to set up again a way of which way do we move forward, what will be the rules of, of uh, you know, uh, the negotiations, and how do, we move, how do we get them together again, all of those kind of things. But just to answer your question, I mean, to me, it was always important to get the job done. I was not that concerned about, you know, uh, the two-thirds versus half, uh, you know, versus majority vote and all of those kind of things. I know there's legal experts out there. They can battle that out. I just want to provide a budget for the people of California so that we can stimulate the economy, create the jobs, and make the necessary cuts, and create the extra revenues so we can move forward. Because we are now talking about a $42 billion dollar deficit, potential deficit. And so we're not talking anymore, let's just cough out a little bit here and a little bit there and have someone come and say, okay, I have an idea for $3 billion. I have an idea for $16 billion. And so, no, we have to address the $42 billion. And this is why I have talked about this four-legged stool. We have to approach this as a comprehensive package because we can't go to the people and say that we want you to pay more taxes. We want you to, to, to get punished by, you know, cutting back on some of those programs and not to stimulate the economy and do something for the people. We've got to create jobs for the people. We've got to keep them in their homes when they go through foreclosure. And we've got to show to them that we as a government will run from now and make a commitment to run government more efficiently and start streamlining so they get more uh, bang for the buck. Governor, is the situation so dire? What, how does it feel to have to go out, you know, next week and tell the people, you know, in your state of the state, when, what could you possibly say to them, and how, how does it feel to have to, to talk to them in that kind of a situation? I think that I've been very clear with the people <laughs> that, uh, you know, that we need to work here as hard as we can in order to come to a solution and, to another, uh, and solve this budget problem before we get to that point where we have to hand out IOUs and so on. 
I think that we have to do everything that we can from now on to sit down again with a new energy, like I said before. I never give up. I never give up. This, you know, I always say that uh, we, are, we are in there together. I respect the Republicans. I respect the Democrats. But I have to ask them again to step over their ideological uh, lines. Because in these last negotiations, what they were not willing to do is to step over the ideological lines. You know, the amount of times that I've heard during the conversations and during our negotiations over the phone and also through video conference and when we got together in person, that they felt uncomfortable to go there. Or they, they, they can't do A, B, and C. Or they've checked back with their special interests and with their advisors, and they were told... Don't go there. I think that it is very clear that in order for us to solve this problem, we have to step over that line. And that was the point that I made to them. If you are willing to step over that line, then I'm willing to step over that line. And that's what the whole negotiation was about. And they were not willing to step over that line. They fell short. What are the two lines that you're talking about? I'm talking about the lines when we talk about the real serious cuts uh, IHSS, real serious cuts in, 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 in CalWORKs, real serious cuts when it comes to the abuse of overtime and sick leave and, 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 and uh, holidays and all of those kind of things. They wanted us to negotiate with the unions to get those kind of things back. Then why would they negotiate with unions to get abuse out of the system? It's ludicrous. They, they should be saying, yes, we could be actually saving the taxpayers more than a billion dollars if we get rid of this abuse. There's more abuse in that almost than in workers' compensation used to be five years ago. I mean, it's clear if I want to run government efficiently and I ask the people to go and to pay and to raise their taxes, it's the least thing that I can go and say back to the people. But in return, we're going to make government more efficient. And we're going to get rid of that waste and abuse and fraud and all of those kind of things. So those are the kind of things where they fell short. And also when it comes to all the economic stimulus package, we said, look, we want to have, you know, the, 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 we want to build roads in the next two, three months. We want to build the roads in the next two, three months without any delays of, you know, red tape and uh, environmental holding back and lawsuits that hold you up for another two, three years. We have money potentially coming through from the Obama administration, billions of dollars, but we got to be ready for that. And we promised them that we would be ready. So there is, this is how you put people to work, is now, not in two years from now, it's too late. Now we have to put people to work. Governor, how close are we? Why do you think now that they're going to come to the table and reach some kind of an agreement? Because, as you know, when the Irish and the Protestants negotiated in Ireland, they also heard that same dialogue over and over. What they've negotiated for years, why do you think they will come to an agreement now? Eventually something do, does happen. And, uh, I mean, I just uh, came from a funeral from Robert Graham, one of the great artists in California who just was inducted in the Hall of Fame in California. And one of the stories that came out there, of one of the eulogies uh, that Cardinal Mahoney uh, was giving, was that it took him five years, five years to come up with the idea of the door at the entrance of this cathedral. So, I mean, you know, that he went back to his studio after a year and said, show me what you have. And he didn't have anything. He went back the second year, and he went back, and he thought, oh, my God, this will never happen. And then all of a sudden he saw the, you know, Mary with this beautiful statue and the relief of the doors and all of this kind of thing. So it's five years. So you never give up. You continue working away. If you believe in something, you continue working and working and working. And I'm going to go and uh, try it again and do it again and do it again and bring the Democrats and the Republicans together. Let them sit together and let's start with a new energy. It's a new year. Everyone makes New Year's resolutions. So here's a, a good chance to say, let's start a new year here. We have a huge budget deficit. We have three weeks before uh, we go off the cliff and before we have to hand out these IOUs. Let's do it. And, uh, you know, I still have faith that we can do it. How close are so we anyway, to shutting down Thanks government? very much, everybody, for How being here today. How close are we to shutting down government? DMV, state parks? 
I mean, well, that, uh, you know, I think the controller will tell you that, uh, you know, we will do everything we can to continue running everything, but as soon as we need to go and uh, start laying off people, which will start on uh, February 1, and then we will be starting sending out IOUs. Thank you very much. Thank you.